start a little bit. Have we talked about Z scores yet? Yes, sir. We haven't? No, we've been doing the homework problem. Sure. Okay. There's Miss Kidd. Let me go ahead and make sure she's here. Yeah, I already checked her here. Okay. All right. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Z scores today so I can get this in because we need to get it in. All right. Now, the good thing about Z scores is it's not real difficult math. Okay. It's real easy math, but you have to work with these and you have to print these out because if you don't print these out and you don't draw a picture, you're not going to be able to do the Z-scores. So I'm just telling you. All right, so what is a Z-score? A Z-score is used for two reasons. One reason is to compare apples to oranges. And I'm going to give you a problem here in a minute. And it's going to compare the president, LBJ, to the, to the basketball player, Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal. Now, those two things have nothing in common, all right, except for they're both males. And you're going to compare them to. The way you do that is a z-score. There's two formulas for a z-score. One is the z-score is equal to x minus x bar over the standard deviation or x minus mu over the standard deviation. And of course, it's the same formula just depends on whether you're using a sample or population. The second formula, which we will use later probably, is X is equal to Oz plus Mu. Now, I told you that the first thing we would do is compare apples to oranges. The second thing we do is in chapter seven, in chapter seven, we're going to find the area under a curve, and we'll do that in chapter seven. Area under the curve. So right now, we're going to do the first part, which is, this is chapter three. We're going to learn how to compare apples to oranges. Now, we're going to use this formula, so I want you to make sure you write that formula down because that's what we're going to use in our example. Okay. All right. So here is the problem. I want you to write it down as soon as I can find it. And there it is. And I'm going to blow it up. There it is. So write that example down. You don't have to write it word for word, but get the gist of it. With a height of 75 inches, Lyndon Johnson, LBJ, was the tallest president in the past century. And he and I looked this up on Google because I didn't know who the shortest president was. Did anybody know who the shortest president was? James Madison was 5'5". Five, five. And Lyndon Johnson still holds the second tallest with, he shares it with Donald Trump. I didn't know that. Who is the first? Come on, everybody ought to get this. Who is the tallest president? Lincoln. Lincoln. Yep. All right. So uh, Shaquille O'Neal is the tallest player in the Miami Heat basketball team. 
That's showing you how old this question is. Who is relatively taller? Does anybody know what relatively means? <laughs> Compared to their own population. That's what it means. Now that's a Hubertism definition. So who is taller compared to their own population? Is Lyndon Bing Jol is LBJ taller compared to other presidents? Or is Shaq taller compared to other basketball players? Well, they're both so we the are same population. Apples to oranges. You're not supposed to answer that. Who, what? Who that they're both in the same population? They're both no, humans? No, no, no. Population of presidents, that's one population. Ah. And the population of basketball players. Okay. All right, so keep writing that down. And I want to ask you, what is the qualifications for being president of the United States? Apparently nothing. <laughs> you said that. I didn't. I'm all, I'm 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 not gonna say a word. Breathing. <laughs> you don't have to be cognitive or sentient, do, do you? No, heck no. Y'all notice gas prices went up again today. Yes, sir. But those people in DC, they just getting richer and richer. All them folks in Texas, you know, they're about to die out there. They can't live off that green energy. They don't know how to live without. Well, they don't know how to build a fire. We better be quiet. All right. So, in order to be president of the United States, you have to be 35 years old, I think. And you have to have a clean record, pretty much. You know, you can't, you can't run for president if you murdered somebody. Well, right. if, if you got to be 35 years old, why they keep uh, uh, hi, keep hiring all these old ass people that's like almost 90 years old? Because they didn't have anybody else to run. All right. And you got to have, you got to be born, a legal born citizen, legally born in the U.S. And you got to have a clean record. I'm going to put clean record. Because you got to be upstanding. You can't have, you can't have any kind of crazy record and run for president. Now, is there any advantage in being tall? Yes. I want you to think about it. Is there any advantage? I just told you that James Madison was five five. No, when you're president. But... Not for president, does it? And you're no, it playing best for you. Which president? I didn't ask. I didn't say a requirement. I said advantage. These are requirements. All right. Is there an advantage for being tall for president? No. Okay. For instance, which what what president was in the wheelchair? FDR. FDR, and he served uh, what four terms? I thought it was uh, two terms. No, it was four terms, I think. Anyway, what what height do you go by? Do you go by his height outside the wheelchair or his height while he's in the wheelchair? So what I'm trying to tell you is there's no advantage. But let me talk let's talk about the qualifications for being a basketball player. You have to be able to run. You have to be able to dribble. You have to be able to shoot. Because if you don't do those three things, you don't get noticed in the high schools and you don't get noticed in college. Okay. Is there advantage? I'm going to put height right here. H-E-I-G-H-T. And we're going to put an X there. Is there advantage for basketball players to be tall? Yes. Yeah. Is it a requirement? No, Spud Webb was 5'7", and he could dunk the basketball. Who is Spud Webb? He used to play beside Michael Jordan in the University of North Carolina. He later went to the Atlanta Hawks. 
and played for a few years. I don't know how many years, but he could dunk the basketball at 5'7". So you don't have to be a tall basketball player to be a successful basketball player, but height is a what? It's an advantage. So if height is an advantage, then what do you consider basketball players? They're usually tall, aren't they? Okay. Yeah. So basketball players are usually tall. So Shaq, I'm going to move this up a little bit. Shaq is a little fish in a big pond. I want you to read that. And I want you to see if you can understand it. If Shaq is a little fish in a big pond, what is the president? What is LBJ? California. California. He's a big fish in a what? A small pond. A little pond. Why is LBJ a big fish in a little pond? Because there is no advantage for being tall as president. Whereas it is an advantage for height for it to be a good basketball player. It's an advantage. So that's why Shaq is a little fish in a big pond and LBJ is a big fish in a little pond. That's relativity. Okay, relativity is what, how you compare to your own population. What if Miss Hunia was six foot three? Is she taller than most men? Yes. But what is she compared to her own population? What's her own population? She's extremely tall. Females. Okay. Her own population is females. So she would be extremely tall relatively. Compared to Mr. Spear, how tall are you, Mr. Spear? 5'11". Okay, he's 5'11". Let's say you were 6'8". Okay, if he was 6'8", he would be relatively tall compared to his population. All right, so we're going to compare these two. We're going to compare LBJ versus... Shaq. You run away too fast. What'd you say? I said you ran away too fast. I didn't finish copying everything. You on this page? Yeah, and I need the other one too. Well, I'll pull this one. Go ahead and finish this one. Let me know when you finished. All right, go back up. Okay. To the problem. There you go. I, it, uh, I need to write that down anyway. So we'll be writing down the numbers. I'm going to be writing them down. So for okay. LBJ, how tall is LBJ? That's X. So X is equal to 75. You calling Lyndon Johnson LBJ? Is that who you calling LBJ? Yeah, that's LBJ. That's You should know that in your history, LBJ. It does not pertain to nursing. You were not a nurse when you came to K through 12. Now, please tell me that they at least talked about the presidents in K through 12. I know they don't teach you, but yeah. I hope they at least mention it. Yeah. Okay. X is equal to, the uh, shack is 85 inches. X bar for presidents is... 71.5 and the standard deviation for presidents is 2.1. The, the mean for basketball players is 80 and the standard deviation for basketball players is 3.3.
Okay, now all you have to do is this. Calculate the z-score for LBJ and calculate the z-score for Shaq using that formula. I'll write it up here in the top left-hand corner. Z is equal to X minus X bar over the standard deviation. Use your calculator. If you're wondering why I got shadows on your paper, I don't turn that above. I don't turn the light, my ceiling fan light on because it puts a shadow on top of the paper. So I turn my hall light on the left and I turn my kitchen light on to the right and I'm getting a shadow from my left hand side. So I know y'all don't really care, but I'm telling you why I've got shadows in here. Ah, shoot. Oh, I got a phone call from Ontario, Canada. Hey, I just got one from uh, California. Oh, they must be giving away free condos. Yep. What's the number one? What is the number one? What is the number one? saying that is true in real life nothing is what free nothing is free how many uh places should we draw to on the always round four places okay Okay, so I'm going to do it with you. There's my handy dandy calculator. So I'm going to set it up. Following using this formula, the Z score for LBJ is equal to 75 minus 71.5 over 2.1. So I'm going to go to my handy dandy calculator and I'm going to do 75 minus 71.5 divided by 2.1. And that gives me Z for LBJ is equal to 1.67. Now, the reason I rounded to two was because it's a repeating decimal. So it doesn't matter where you round it. You can round it anywhere. You know, it's going to be 1.67. I think this damn calculator's messed up. Subtract 71.5. 75 minus 71.5. Divided. By 2.1. I, I, I don't know. Got it? Yes. All right, now let's do the Z score for Shaq. That's going to be 85 minus 80 over 3.3. 1.5152. I have no idea. I'm fixing to do it. 85 minus 80 divided by 3.3, 1.52. Okay, now how do we decide which one's relatively taller? Well, we draw it on a 
and draw it on a curve. But I'm just going to draw this because I don't need all the percentages. So I'm just going to draw a bell curve. And all, when we're doing Z scores, write this down in red. When we're doing Z scores, the mean is equal to zero and the standard deviation is equal to one. So uh, on your bottom of your number line, it's always going to be like this. Zero, one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three. Now, you can put your numbers on the bottom, like 100, 120, 140. That's fine, but usually you can put both of them. So if I had a, if I had a group of data and the mean was 100 and the standard deviation was 20, I could put down here in a different color, 100, 120, 140. But I don't have that here, so I'm not worried about it. Now, I want you, now we know what do we know about this red area right here? It's an uh, outlier. It's an outlier. We also know that this area right here is unusual. So the closer we get to those two areas, the more we are unusual. Does everybody agree with that? Yes. The more we get toward the th toward the pink, the more unusual we are. So let's plot LBJ. We're going to plot him since he was a Democrat. We're going to plot him in blue. Pretty sorry, Democrat, too. Um, we're going to plot him in blue. Why do you think they killed the kid? Um, um, that's blue. And 1.67 is right about here. And since Shaq was on the Lakers team, I'm going to do, let's see if I can find purple. I think this is purple. Shaq is right here. Which one is closer to the outlier? LBJ. So LBJ is relatively taller. LBJ is closer to the pink. Therefore, he is relatively taller. Now, there's one thing I need to warn you on with these questions. When you're dealing with Z-scores, you have to, you have to, I'm gonna write this in green. You have to read and understand the context of the question. And I'm going to put stars beside that. Okay, let me ask you something. If Mr. Spear was eight foot two inches, is that normal or is that unusual? Eight foot two, that's unusual. Okay, so the context of a question with Mr. Spear being eight foot two, naturally, it's going to be centered toward unusual or what? Outlier. But if I'm asking you which grade is better, 
a 72 or 74 on two different tests. The closer you are to normal, the better. Now I want you to understand what I just said. I want to make sure everybody's not writing. So go ahead and finish writing. And I want you to understand what I just said. This question that we just went over is talking about two very tall individuals. If you're talking about two very tall individuals, you're naturally going to be measuring toward unusual and outliers. Does everybody understand that? But if I'm asking you what is the better score between a 72 on a psychology test and a 78 on a economics test, that would be inclined to be more normal. So you would measure the most inside score. I want everybody to understand that. Okay. If you're talking about being taller, being wider, being smaller, okay, what if I was measuring two people that were 5'3 and 5'2? That's that really would be close. the outliers. So I would, the furthest one would be relatively shorter. But what if I was asking you a, a 75 on economics test? and a 78 on a psychology test. That's not outliers, that's normal. So you want to do the closest to zero. So if the, let me show you. Let's say that you measured a Z-score and the, the economics test landed right here. Let's say an economics test of 72. And you did the Z-score and a psychology test was right here of 78. Which score would be better? Well, in the context of the question, you want the more normal. So that would be the 72. You got to be careful with the context of the question on Z scores. I'm just warning you, okay? I don't usually get too tricky on it. I just, in fact, the question, I went over the test today for Math 12010. And the question was, who is relatively taller? A six foot three girl or a six foot eight boy? And it was just like this question. So I don't want you to get all psyched out because it's not that big of a deal. The question on the test that I saw today was, you know, taller. That's how you do Z scores. That's pretty simple. Yeah. If you do it, and I'm not talking to you, if the class does it like I just showed you, if you try to do your own way and you try to cut and you don't draw the picture, then don't cry when you get it wrong. And that's Z scores. Now we're going to revisit Z scores in chapter seven. So that's not all Z scores, but that's it for, that's it. Chapter three, you're done. All right, so let's go back to the homework. Did okay. uh, Richie or Smith ever show up? No. Okay, we'll submit. All right. Now I'm going to go to the homework. I meant the questions, and I got to hurry because I only got like 35 minutes, so I got to do as fast as I can. All right, we got a. Ask my instructor, this is, I don't know what this is. What is that? 3.2, it says, I don't know why it says suspected spam. 3.2, number nine, question five. First of all, is it a test question? Hang on, let me get there. Yes, yes, this is a test question. Okay, now, as I told the 12010 class this morning, this class is a chap. This 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 question is a chapter one question and a chapter three question. The chapter one is right here. All right. So when you see that word right there, this is what you should be saying to yourself. And I'm gonna bring up my handy dandy right here. 
This is what you should say when you do this question. This is a sample. Therefore, X bar and S. Okay, because X bar and S is what we call what? Lowercase what? Samples. Statistics. statistics. And it goes with the sample. Variables used in the sample. So you see that? You see that sigma? You can just cross that out because that's not the answer. Bravo is not the answer. So we know that the answer is going to be A, so I'm going to go ahead and click A because that's going to be my answer. Now, I'm going to go to the handy dandy calculator because that's what you need to use on the test unless you got a bunch of numbers. So I'm going to go to the handy dandy calculator and we're all going to type it in. Stat, edit, and I'm going to type in a 7, a 52, a 12, a 48, a 37, a 22. My mouse is not working right. 29, 28, 35, and 32. Now, second thing you're going to do after you punch them in is put them what? Order. So hit stat, sort A, and type in second one. Close parentheses, and now they're in order. How do you how do you put in second one? I don't second, second and oh, then second one. one and close the parentheses and enter. And enter, and it should say done. You always go back and check it, hit stat, edit, and they should be in order. Dead edit. Okay, one more time. When you're doing to put them in order, stat. Sort A. All right, sort A. And then second, All right. L, second Dead. one, and then close parentheses. Okay, and then it hits All right. Button. And when now, you hit done, it says done, and then what do you do? I go to stat edit so you can look at them and make sure that it did it. Okay. Okay. All right. And then. Okay, now hit stat, calculate, first variable statistic, and calculate. And I'm going to write down. I'm going to write down three important, two important numbers. In this question, the mean is always important. It's X bar. I don't know if it needs it in this question, but and then S is equal to SX, which is equal to 14.7. I'm going to write it out 14.17195598. Now, the calculator does not give you the variance, which is called S squared. This question wants S squared. So you take your handy dandy calculator and you take clear and you take 14.1719598 and you raise it to the second power. And we got 200.8444446. And now I'm ready to type in my answers. So the variance, it says round to two decimal places. Oh, shoot. Is 200.84. Look there. And the standard deviation, read the directions. They try to get you right there. They want you to do that one to two, but then they come down here and do one. That's a trick question. I don't like it. S is equal to 14.2. And this is yeah. where you take the square root of the uh, variance to get the standard well, deviation? Well, you don't have to. It's already given to you. But yes, 
that's already given to you is SX. Now that right there is a test question. I think there's probably two or three of these on the test. Okay. Um, when you say SX, that is the standard deviation, correct? Mm hmm. Right here. Hold on. See me where I wrote it right there? Standard. Standard deviation is equal to SX is equal to 14, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Got it? Okay. Let's go to the next one. I'm going to delete that one. Some this, of these may, some of these that I sent are probably repeating, and if they are, I'm sorry, but. I went over one this morning for the 12010 class, and one of the students says, this is the fifth time we went over this problem. I said, well, that's what I do. 3.2, number five, slash four. And it's important to see if it's a test question or not. Yes. Another one. Here is the key word right here. There it is. I'm going to let y'all do this one since it's only five numbers. I'm going to blow it up. You, <laughs> you, see, you must see me squinting. <laughs> I see two or three of y'all squinting. Some of y'all just bring your head up to the to the monitor like this. My glass has been missing all week. Guess where that's at? On the kitchen table. Yeah. It's all right, so I'm going to write them down and I want y'all to do it. Give y'all a minute or two to do it. 21, 13, 3, 8, 12. And I'm going to wait. I'm going to do everything on the calculator so you can follow it. Bar. Y'all should feel blessed. If y'all had one of those other teachers on Rate My Professor. They tell you on your own. Yep. Because, they, in fact, I know two teachers. You know what they do with Ask My Instructor? They cut it off so you can't send them questions. I can't, uh -uh, I can't deal with that. <laughs> And if you don't believe me, go ahead and take some more math courses and see if you don't run into them. They cut it off. My department head don't like that, but there's nothing really she can do about it because it falls under academic freedom, which is what teachers have in the classroom. I'm a firm believer in it because I couldn't, I couldn't do some of the stuff I do if it wasn't for academic freedom. I am going to go ahead and type the numbers in, but I'm not going to do anything else. Stat, edit, clear. And I'm going to type in 21, 13, 3, 8, and 12. OK, when you get the standard deviation and the variance, when you're finished, give me a yellow virtual hand, please, and leave it up, please. So I'll know, because I don't want to leave anybody behind. I'm a, a little bit confused. The standard I'm deviation, here. you said the standard deviation they already give us, correct? SX. And we just have to round it. OK, you have to. I wouldn't round it till you typed it in because I wouldn't round it. Do not round it when you square it. OK, you need to push the whole number in when you square no. it at the variance. Yeah, so I got that. I got that. OK, I got three hands. I need a few more hands before I get started. Let me know. Click on the hands.
Okay, one or two more, and then we'll go. Miss Gill, you ain't going to sleep, are you? Yeah, she done gone to sleep. There she is. Okay. And she's in my 120. She's in my 103 class. So I know she knows how to do it. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. Okay, you can take your hands down now. All right, so here we go. I got them in. First thing I'm going to do is what? Stat. Sort. Second. L1. Close parentheses. Enter. Stat. Edit and they are in order. And now I'm going to hit stat, calculate, first variable statistic, go down to calculate, and my mean is 11.4, x bar equals 11.4, sx, which is s, which is the standard deviation, is equal to 6.6558245517. And I'm going to take that number and I'm going to take 6.6658245517. And I'm going to raise that to the second power. And I get 44.3, and that is S squared, which is called the variance. And you got the variance correct, or, well, that's the correct answer. 44.3 is the correct answer. And then you move down, and 6.7. Notice S because of what? The okay. sample. Now, there is a question. I did a 120 uh, test question this morning. 12010 and it said population right here. If it says population, you hit sigma on this one and this one. So when All we right. find the population, how is that different from the standard deviation or do you work it the same way? This is this this is called the population standard deviation, sigma. And this yeah, is the population. Uh, I'm sorry, population variance, population standard deviation. The Greek letter tells you that it's dealing with the population. It's still but, the variance. Oh, I was going to say, but deviation. you work it the same way. It just tells you it's population, not sample. That's it. That would make, it that same makes way. a lot more sense. You do it the same way. Okay, so that's what was confusing me. It confuses a lot of students, let me tell you. That ain't the first time I've had to go over that question. 3.29 slash 5. I think we did this one. I think that's the one with all the big old letters. No, we did this okay. one. I mean, that's the same one. I'm going to skip way. that. Work it the same way? Yep. Okay. 3.223 slash 9. That's that oh, ugly one. That's that big one. Okay, I'm going to do it, but I'm not, I'm going to do it and show you the empirical rule, okay? I'm not going to, I'm not going to ask you to type those in because this is not a test question, but there are four questions that are test questions, but just not this many numbers. This is ridiculous, okay? So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'm not going, I'm not going to type them in. I'm going to use the Excel spreadsheet. And all you need to find on this one, write this down. When you do this problem, you only have to find two things, the mean and the standard deviation. Now, what's the thing I'm going to do? I'm going to put them in what? Uh, order. Put them in order. So watch what I'm doing here because that's all I'm doing. Put them in order. Data and in order. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do, let me make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to put mean 
and standard deviation. Now, what would you do? What are you going to do on homework question? You're going to punch all these in the calculator and you're going to go to first variable statistic and you're going to write down the mean and the standard deviation. That's all you do. So I'm going to find the mean right now. Divide by 50. Here's the mean. And the standard deviation, I'm just going to do something right here. I'm going to save a little bit of time. And I'm going to standard deviation. Y'all just ignore what I'm doing. I'm just saving me some time. Y'all do this on a calculator. You do not do this by hand. And there's my standard deviation. Everybody see that? Those are the two numbers you need for this problem, whether it's a math problem, I mean, whether it's a test problem or a homework problem. Now, if it's a test problem, I'll give you like 15 numbers. I'm not going to give you 50. That's just overkill. It that's is. Asking, that's asking somebody to get that question yeah. wrong. It is. All right. Now, watch what I do here. I'm going to do my numbers so I don't have to ask y'all to do it on a calculator for my normal curve, for my empirical rule. So I'm going to put the middle, put the mean in the middle. And I'm going to extend these three a little bit. Y'all see what I'm doing in just a second, OK? Just hold, just bear, bear with me for a moment. I don't want to do that. There we go. All right, here we go. What am I going to do on the right side? I'm going to add. So I'm going to add my standard deviation plus that number, F4. And I'm going to copy three ways over. And then I'm going to, what am I going to do on the left-hand side? I'm going to subtract, subtract. F4. Now this you would do by hand on your empirical rule um, curve, and I'm fixing to do that. But the reason I'm doing it on the Excel spreadsheet is so I don't have to do it and have y'all do it on the calculator and, and give me the wrong answers half the time. And OK, so now I've got my numbers. Now watch what I'm going to do here. Pull out my handy dandy curve. And I'm going to put those numbers on the curve. And I'll make it big, OK? So I take my plain sheet that's got my curve on it. And I put 0.8422 in the middle. And then 0 0.919102. 0.9102 and then 0 0.9780, 0 0.9780 and then 1.046, 1 1.046. And then I go to the left hand side, 0 0.7743, 0 0.7064, and 0 0.6384. And what have I been doing for the last week and a half after I do the numbers? What do I do next? Y'all should know. What am I reaching for right now? Ask the question again. What do I do next after I do these? Oops, I'm sorry. Hold on. I thought I'd hold on. There. What do I do next after I do these numbers down here? What do I always do? Find, I your, show find your mean uh, in the middle. No, what do I always do to the curve after I after I do the numbers? What do I do? You color it. You do yep. your 95 percent, exactly. then you do your uh, um, outliers and then your unusuals. There you go. And that's the four questions that they're going to ask you. 
after you do this. So if you've got one of these already colored, it ain't gonna take you as long as I, I'm doing. And my yellow, a lot of people, like I told you, y'all said, why in the world do you keep doing that? Well, when we get to chapter seven, you're gonna appreciate it. You're not gonna go, oh God, where'd that come from? And the pink is the outliers. Now, these two questions that's gonna be asked, two of them are gonna be empirical rule and two of them are gonna be actually counting the numbers. So let's go back to the question. And here are your test questions. For one, there's a standard deviation, 0 0.068. Now, you're going to type that in, and that's OK. If it's a normal curve, then you can apply it to what? The empirical rule. If it's a normal curve, then you can apply it to the empirical rule. What does this look like? It looks like a normal curve. Everybody with me? So that's what that says. If the histogram is bell shaped, you can use the empirical rule. Now somebody read this question. What does it say? Use the empirical rule to determine the percentage of candies between 0 0.706 and 0 0.978. Well, we already did that. Here it is. 0 0.706 and 0 0.978, 95%. And everybody goes, that's easy. And you put 95% and you get it right. But this next one, what does this word mean? What does actual percentage mean? Does it, does it mean the total percent of what does the word Wait, actual mean? Actual? Yeah. The real percentage, like that. So you're going to count real. the numbers. That's right, the real. So you got 50 numbers up here. What numbers are between 0 0.706 and 0 0.978? So you go to your numbers, and all of these are above 0 0.706. You keep going till you get to 978. Well, 96 is under 978. So, how many out of 50? I'm asking y'all, how many out of 50 are between 0 0.706 and 0 0.978? Uh, out of 50, wasn't there like 47? It was 49. I know it's hard to see. Yeah. So the actual, I go back to my handy dandy. The actual between 0 0.706 and 0 0.978 is equal to 49 over 50. I need somebody to give me that number, please. Point nine eight, And that is 98%. So for the actual, and you need to put in your notes, actual means count the numbers. That's what actual means. So I'm going to go back to the, and that's going to be right here, 98. And, okay. That's it. Now the next one is an empirical rule. You use the empirical rule to determine the percentage more than 0 0.910. Where is 0 0.910? It's right here. So I'm going, which is more, to the right or to the left? To the left. Come on now. Uh, to right. To the right. Remember, number line, 
What's to the right? Small numbers or? Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So somebody add up those three percentages. Oh, this thing. Damn. You say sixteen. Thirteen point five plus two point three five plus point one five is sixteen. Yes, sir. Here you go. Ding. Ding dong. All right, now. Actual. We're gonna count questions? numbers above point nine one zero. So go back to the spreadsheet. What numbers are above point nine one zero? Oh. Point nine one zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Point two, which is twenty percent. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten over fifty is one over five. One over five is two tenths, which is point two, which is twenty percent. Uh, Costanzo, do you have a question or is yours hand up? Okay. I thought you I thought you had a question. So that's going to be 20%. And type in 20. That's not it. I have no idea what the answer is. Let me check what is one over five. What is my one divided by five? Turn the damn thing on, Hubert. One divided by five. Point two. Is that not 20%? Did I not count right? Times 100. Nine, one. 20%. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Does anybody see anything different from what I just? No. Didn't I tell you this thing? You'll put the right answer in and it'll be asked backwards. It's a conspiracy. Them damn Russians. Yep. Well, that's not right. 18 is not right. Now, I think I know. Here it is. What does that say? Can't read it. More, it than, more, than, more than not equal to. This is a little this is almost a trick question. More than means you can't use point nine one. So go back to your and I can't use point nine one, so I gotta use these which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Somebody take nine and divide it by 50. What do you get? Zero point 18. That's what it is right there. You cannot use 0 0.91 because 0 0.91 is equal to 0 0.91. Does everybody understand that? Is, is it a trick question? Kind of. You got to be careful. It got me. So be careful. Make sure, make sure you make a note on that one because I do use these type questions right here. I use those questions on the test. Use empirical rule especially. All right, let's go to the next one. I got to hurry. Some of y'all are going to start convulsing. 29 slash 10. This is a test question. And the first thing I'm going to do. Draw the empirical rule. Draw the empirical rule. Good job. So draw it. I guarantee you there's still people in here that hadn't printed them out. I guarantee it. 
There that is. So go ahead and get to it. I'll make it bigger after I I do it. So go ahead and I want you to fill it out. I want you to color it. And I'm going to write down what they want so I don't have to go back and forth. Between 80 and 120. Uh, less than 40. And greater than 160. And greater than 140. So there's A, B, and C. Mean is equal to 100 and standard deviation is equal to 20. All right, now I can make mine big. There we go. So that's basically what the question is asking. So I'm going to put 100 right here. 120, 140, 160. 80, 60, 40. I'm going to color it. And 95% is going to fall within the green area. And the unusual and the outline. I'm trying to hurry because I don't want anybody to self combust on video. Now, what's the percentage between 80? And 120. Uh, 95%. Look at the percentages. Did I not just say 95? It's 68. Percentage. 95 goes to here. It's 68. 68%. You got to add those two. Say I'm covering up this part of the green. 68. So 68%. All right, now what's less than 40 and greater than 60? What's 15 cent and 15 cent? 30. So that'd be 0.3. And what number is how, how many is going to be greater? Then 140. I'm wanting somebody to say something. Don't you? This is where you just add the percent, correct? Yeah, what is it? Well, I got 2.7. You can't add. Do it again. 2.35 okay. plus. Is that 0. 0.15? 0. 0.15. 2.5. There you go. Now there are two or three questions on the test that does this. Oh, great. Well, that's not difficult. No, I just got to figure it out. Well, just just remember to read the percentages. And you got to draw your numbers down here. You, you got to say, OK, between one, between I know you're doing it, but OK. Now, what you did, Miss Kid, is you did 95 percent. That's 95, but that's not what the question was asking. The question right. said 80 to 120. 
and that's 34 and 34, which is 68. So that was your only problem. Okay. I just got to learn how to add it up. That's all. Yep. That's that. All right. my, I've got to learn how to read the question and you just, get it you in just my mind it. greater than or less than. You just said what is the most important part of probability and statistics? Reading the what? Question. Reading the question. I want to look at this right quick with you. 3.235 slash 11. I'm just going to look at it with you right quick and see if we've done it. This, yeah, we've done this. Chesney Chebyshev is not going to be tested, but you got to use this formula for Chebyshev. You got to use one minus one over K multiplied by 100. And K is equal to the standard deviations that they asked for. And in the question, in the question, it says the first one, A, K is equal to two. Plug and chug. Oh, that's squared. Sorry, there we go. B, it says 1.5. K is equal to 1.5. Plug and chug. And then the last one is going to be four. K is equal to four. Where do you, now, you round the three? Where do you... Where do you get four from? You round Just the... take my word for it. It's going to be negative four and four, which is four. You do so, the math, it's going to come out to be four. So when we do this problem, we have the to do the three, the three boxes, right? Yeah. So we do the X bar minus uh, X minus X bar, and then um, you round it. No, you no, square you do it. this right here. I'm sorry. You do this. This gives you the percentage. That equals the percentage that they want. So you plug in two. So that's going to be one minus one over two squared. Do that math. And then one minus one over 1.5 squared. Do the math. And then one minus one over four squared. And I can tell you right now that that last one is equal to 75%. Do you square the fraction or do you square the denominator? You square the denominator. All right, let me make me a note. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and do something for some of y'all. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and enable the test for the weekend because I know some of y'all might be ready for it. We will go over the test Tuesday. And we will go over homework questions Tuesday. Has everybody got that? All right. I need to go because y'all are going to blow up and I don't want y'all to blow up on video. Y'all have a good weekend. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. <laughs> you too.